This podcast is brought to you by healthrangerstore.com. Lab tested clean foods and supplements for immune function, long term storage, and survival applications. Every purchase helps fund this free speech video platform. Thank you for your support. There's been a lot of talk recently about Earth moving through an asteroid field and the possibility of a lot of asteroids impacting with Earth during this time over the next, I don't know, some people say six months, some people say a couple of years. Uh, I've got a few thoughts on this because I've been asked about this. Uh, this podcast won't be very long, but here's here are some things that I know for sure. Number one is that uh, if if an asteroid impact is imminent against our planet, we will not be told. So So that's a given. The government will not tell us because there's really no point, <laughs> especially if it's a an extinction level event. Secondly, an impact uh, with an asteroid is foretold in the book of Revelation. It specifically talks about an ocean impact, a mountain of fire impacting in the ocean and destroying a third of the world's ships. So that's a big deal. Obviously, an ocean impact of a mountain-sized meteor, even though it's hard to know exactly what what mass that is and what's the velocity. We don't know. The Bible doesn't give us velocity <laughs> information for asteroids. But wouldn't be hard to imagine something like that. Some if it if it destroys a third of the world's ships, it probably means that it's going to have a massive 1,000 foot high wave that spreads around the entire planet, moving through the ocean and destroying every harbor, every port, every ship that's close to land. And then, of course, sending surges of ocean water inland. Imagine a large tidal wave or storm surge, but a thousand feet high, hitting every coastal area around the world for the most part. Uh, it would also, of course, destroy every coastal city, which includes essentially New York City and Washington, D.C. and Miami and mostly London and, you know, cities all around the world that are anywhere near the ocean will be completely destroyed by this. The other thing I know about this is that smaller rocks will burn up in the atmosphere based on, of course, their density and composition, uh, velocity, and so on. But small rocks, and I'm just guessing maybe anything under, I'm just guessing, 250 feet in diameter, let's say, anything under that might just burn up in the atmosphere. Again, depending on its density and, and materials and so on, but anything larger than that might have an impact chance. But it seems like what the Bible is talking about is a mountain-sized rock, so we're way beyond 250 feet. You know, we might be talking about something that is thousands of feet in diameter or even, you know, kilometers in diameter to, to get to the metric system finally. Uh, and those would be devastating. The other thing that I know with certainty is that the number one most efficient way to travel throughout the cosmos when you have uh, technology to travel uh, you know, efficiently, you you've got rocket thrusters, you've got faster than light travel drives and so on, advanced civilizations. The number one way to do that is to find large space rocks and hollow them out to be ships. And this allows you to have a stealth uh, approach to any world, because to the world, it just looks like another asteroid is approaching when you're actually a ship. So if you ever see asteroids traveling in formation or accelerating or decelerating beyond what would be expected by norm normal uh, gravity and you know, acceleration of gravity caused by uh, planets and stars and so on, if you see that kind of behavior, it probably indicates that those are actually ships that look like meteors or look like asteroids rather than just being random asteroids. So uh, keep that in mind. <laughs> it's, it's no joke. So I don't know exactly what we're facing here. I know that we are, uh, we're facing, I mean, things are hitting the planet all the time. In fact, one of the things I love to do is to take my binocular night vision gear at night in a clear sky evening and look up at the sky and just watch all the shooting stars. If you have night vision equipment, you just look up. You can see shooting stars about every minute. I mean, they're just all over the place. It's really quite fun, actually, 
Uh, night vision, I know, has a lot of tactical use, but I like to look up at the sky and just be in amazement at the spiral arm of the Milky Way galaxy, which is clearly visible in night vision. And if you don't have night vision gear, you should probably get some because it helps you look at stars. It's pretty awesome. The night sky is just filled with, obviously, billions of stars. But I mean, using night vision to look at stars compared to the naked eye, it's like there's like a thousand times more stars. It's just mind blowing. And you can clearly see the spiral arm of the Milky Way galaxy in which we we live. You know, that's our that's our home. That's our home galaxy. You got to check it out. Uh, go to readymaderesources.com, readymaderesources.com. Bob Griswold there has night vision gear. Uh, that's where I get my night vision. It's really very good, high-end equipment. He's a patriot and a Christian and an honest man, and he will help you in every way possible to get the best gear that you can afford. And uh, talk to him about looking at stars in the night sky with night vision, because it's one of the uses. It's, it's like another way you can justify the very expensive price that night vision costs. It's like, not only are you defending yourself against, you know, the zombie invasion in the future, but also you can see shooting stars. You can see the Milky Way spiral arm. You can look up at the night sky and have a great time. Seriously, it's, it's really fun to do. Uh, but are we going to get hit by asteroids? I don't know. I don't know if we are. Uh, it would be a great time to live in an underground bunker, probably, <laughs> and nowhere near the coast. How about that? So those are my thoughts on the subject. Thank you for listening. This is Mike Adams here, the Health Ranger. Check out my website, space.news, as well as brighteon.com for videos and podcasts. Thank you for listening. A global reset is coming, and that's why I've recorded a new nine-hour audiobook. It's called The Global Reset Survival Guide. You can download it for free by subscribing to the naturalnews.com email newsletter, which is also free. I'll describe how the monetary system fails. I also cover emergency medicine and first aid and what to buy to help you avoid infections. So download this guide. It's free. It's my gift to you simply because I want like-minded people to survive.